Well, it's been a blue weekend in politics, so in case you missed what came out of the DA Congress. John Steenhuisen re-elected as DA leader, also declaring, we'll talk about the coalitions, that the EFF is the party's enemy number one. Uh, that's not just for now, of course, but for next year's elections. A very eventful Congress. Let's reflect on uh, what happened and how, what's now come out of it and where the hard work is going to start. Uh, joined by the party spokesperson and newly elected second deputy federal chairperson, by the way. It's uh, Sally Malazzi. Uh, Making time for us to come in this morning. Hello, Solly. Good to have you with us. So, blue suit, a blue weekend. <laughs> that wasn't by mistake. Staying on message. Yeah, I was about to say, stay on message. That wasn't by mistake. Solly, no, when you wasn't. walked in as well. So, the celebrations are over. Yeah. Now, the hard work starts. I've been saying this all weekend. I get the sense this Congress is probably the most important for the party, knowing the expectations of growth for the DA, what the DA is saying, and the expectation that ANC is going to lose support next year. The DA could, according to some analysts, end up at the union buildings. Very important vote yesterday. Absolutely. I think that analysis is quite correct. And even if you listened at John Steinhazen's speech, I mean, both speeches when he was reporting back to Congress on, you know, the tenure of his leadership and his victory speech, which was basically outlining the alternatives that the country faces and what the voters face, the reality is that no party is likely to get 50 percent or 50 plus 1 percent in order to form a majority government on its own. Mm. So what's going to happen is that you're going to have a coalition government. The shape and form of those coalition governments is going to be narrowed into two options. One is the option of the ANC and the EFF on one coalition. We've already seen hints and indications of their political collaboration in Ukurleni, in Johannesburg, and their stillborn attempts in, in Swane to oust you know, the, the, op, the coalition led by the DA. And on the other side is a coalition of the opposition parties who have common values with the DA being the largest opposition party there. And what we are trying to do is to anchor the DA, to position the DA as the anchor of those opposition parties. And the declaration of the EFF as public enemy number one is simply due to the reason that we are ideologically on two different sides and that primarily opposition parties exist to take the largest party in government out, but the EFF is the one that's using the political capital to prolong the ANC stay in power. So what we are doing is to showcase the alternatives that are there for voters so that they go into this election fully aware of what the prospects are and what the reality is going to be. Mm, and it's going to be tricky for voters next year as well because the coalitions, you'll agree, I'm sure, do tend to flip-flop. It can be difficult to try and keep track of who's in bed yeah. with who and who's liking who when. On a national picture, mm. I want to talk and just kick the tin down to the elections next year. If someone were to vote for the DA, how do you try and convince them, which I'm sure will be part of the party messaging, how do you try and convince them that if they vote for the DA next year, mm. you're not going to end up uh, in a coalition with a party that might not agree with the DA's policies yeah. and values, etc. How do you do that? Because the DA as a party has to maneuver, but once a voter has put their mark down, they want to know what they're getting. Absolutely. It's a very important aspect, and we try to um, insert um, coalition agreements, formal coalition agreements, which would tie down all the parties, you know, to a set of conditions um, centered around common values that we agree on, so that we don't have the kind of scenario that we have experienced in, in your previous story of having 10-day mayors, because it causes um, governance instability and there is a direct correlation between government instability and the level of service delivery. In there. So one of the things that we've been pushing in Parliament, for instance, is legislative reform to introduce this um, coalition government bill because if you look at the constitution yes it was made but it didn't have the foresight that we would get to a stage where we go beyond one party uh, domination so we have proposed in parliament a bill that looks at formalizing coalition agreements that looks at introducing a threshold for political parties in order to be in a coalition it's well established practice in Europe and even in Kenya I think is the most recent example in Africa because if you look at these parties one percent in fact less than one percent parties mm. one or two councillors, but they're having to decide the future of metros like Johannesburg, like Tswane, like Ur It's Urlen. very fragmented politics, isn't it? Well, it it's is. difficult to keep up unless you're in that loop uh, of politics as well. Why wasn't there an overwhelming majority vote, do you think, at Congress for a, a deputy leader? I mean, you're the second deputy yeah. federal chair. The tone yeah. is there for deputies. Uh, why do you think you it's, mean for it was the deputy so leader? Deputy, I mean, you yeah. are, yes, but I'm talking yeah. about the deputy leader position, sure. for example, for Dr. Paul Palazzo. Why do you think that didn't happen? It's been spoken about so many times. Yeah. Yes, I know there was a vote, yeah. but optically, 
as well. Would it not have looked better for the DA to have a black woman in a position of leadership, even if it was deputy? Well, the thing is, Congress decided um, to vote a proposed um, amendment to the Constitution that sought to introduce the uh, position of the deputy federal leader. It currently doesn't exist in the, D in the DA's Congress, so um, there wouldn't have been election for that. But in order for a constitutional amendment to pass, um, and become part of the constitution, it needs two-thirds majority of Congress. Uh, it just came short of that. And I think when you look at the structure of the DA federal leadership, the feeling that I get from Congress reading into that was that you don't want a bloated structure. Um, um, you don't want this bloated structure of leadership because already you've got the federal chairperson of the party with three deputies, and then you've got the federal de the federal council chairperson who has three deputies. But this is a conversation that always comes up at every Congress of the DA, the proposal around whether we should have a, a, a deputy leader, and Congress ultimately, as the highest decision-making body of the party, decides. Perhaps at the next Congress, the outcome of that vote may be different. I was about to say, there's always another Congress, isn't yes. there? I want to ask you this. I want to circle back to the coalitions, but not as you and I were talking about the local coalitions, the yeah. municipal coalitions. So the DA, if I have this correct, will not go or not willing to go into a coalition with the ANC or EFF. You agree? Absolutely correct. But how would that work then if the DA were to end up at the union buildings? You would have to work directly with the ANC president and the president of the country. And now again, we're going to have this tussle. How do you govern nationally, even in a secondary position? I know the DA will say they would like to take the union buildings, but you would have to work with the ANC because it would be an ANC-led government. So how do you try and balance that? Well, I mean, the election results will guide their approach, right? Um, because you can talk all you like in terms of how you structure that coalition, but the election results are the final determinant of how you structure it. But our position going into that is that it is quite clear in terms of the parties that we align with common values that we can work with is that there are parties like Action SA, parties like the SADP, parties like the IFP that we can work with, mm -hmm. right? And scenarios of governance, you might find that nobody is in a position to get um, absolute power in order to form the executive. And then we can look at considerations as to whether we'd like to hold the legislative arm of government, which is parliament and the parliamentary committees and, you know, the speaker's role, so that we can be, um, we can have a robust, a robust cabinet and hold the executive to account. But like for us, where we stand, we are not looking at scenarios of helping the ANC get into power or maintain a government. We are working at substituting the ANC in government. Very briefly, Solia, I want to say goodbye to you in a moment. Yeah. Just uh, answer me this. Do you think John Steenhuizen will replace Paul Mashatile as deputy president next year? Come again? Will, will John Steenhuizen replace Paul Mashatile as deputy president of the country next at year? Is stage, that the goal? At this stage, John Steenhuizen will replace the president of the ANC as the president of the country. I was curious to see what you were going to say. Solly, thank you very much uh, for coming in and joining us. Solly Malazzi, DA spokesperson, second deputy uh, federal chair, joining us here uh, on ENC.